Hello and welcome to Living Well, your show for information and inspiration to improve your health and wellness. I am your host, Karen Fabian, and thank you so much for watching. We have an interesting show for you today, full of information and inspiration inspired by the start of a new year. We're first going to meet Dr. Rachel Pajednik, and Dr. Pajednik was on an earlier show, and she's going to share for us today a number of tips on exercise and nutrition to keep you on track for the whole year. We're then going to talk about what the healthy checkups are that you should be doing as you go throughout your year. We'll be talking to Elizabeth Larson, who is a physician's assistant, and she also specializes in holistic medicine. And at the end of the show, we're going to talk about healthy beverages with the founder of Life Force Beverages, makers of Jubilee, and meet Liam Madden, the founder of that company. If you're watching us on the Boston Neighborhood Network here in Boston, thank you so much for watching. After every show, I post it on my YouTube channel, Bare Bones Yoga, so you can catch earlier episodes there and also watch this show as well. I'd like to thank the show's major sponsor, Yoga Reaches Out, a wonderful nonprofit that uses money raised at yoga events to support children's charities. And lastly, my friends at Zumi's Coffee for being a sponsor as well, 221 Main Street in Boston. Please visit them for delicious breakfast and lunch. So let's get started with the show. Uh, in our first of three segments, we're going to meet Dr. Rachel Pajednik. And Dr. Pajednik was on the show back in October, and we had such a great time, and she shared so much wonderful information that I asked her to come back. Dr. Pajednik has her PhD in Biochemical and Molecular Nutrition and Exercise Physiology from Tufts University and conducts research at the Institute of Lifestyle Medicine. She is also an instructor at Flywheel Boston. Welcome back to the show, Rachel. It's like to be back. Thanks yes. so much for having me. Me too. We have a lot of conversations about health and wellness, and I always try to condense to the most essential ones for yes. when you come on. So especially because it's the new year and people are inspired to really take charge of their health, uh, I thought the first thing that we could talk about was just top advice for people around health and wellness for the new year. What would you? What comes to mind? I think the most important thing that people really need to take into consideration in the beginning part of the year is to keep everything well-rounded and mm -hmm. balanced. We always have a tendency to use January 1st as this massive tipping point mm -hmm. where we mm -hmm. feel like we need to make a huge change. And not only does the research show, but I think that people out there can relate to the idea that when you make a huge and drastic change, it's really challenging to stick to for the long term. And so it's really important to take a survey of sort of where your life is right now and pick out one or two small changes that you can make and use those as the catalyst for some longer term and bigger changes that you can make over the full year. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, you know, there are a lot of wellness trends that especially this time of year people invest in yes. and one of them is the cleanse. The cleanse. The cleanse. Um, what are your, th I mean I know there are probably lots of different kinds, I've never done one, but what are your thoughts on that? Is that nutritionally safe? Yeah, so the cleanse or the detox, mm -hmm. um, right. Ki right, kind of uh, runs the gamut of, you know, you can be sort of as simple as people go on a three-day juice cleanse all the way to really more extreme ends where people are talking about colon cleansing mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. all of this really more extreme, invasive kind of detoxing. And I think that there are two things that I would say about that. First is your body doesn't need to detox or cleanse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if your body needed to detox or cleanse, you would be very sick. Okay. And so the important part that you need to, me to remember is that your body is really good at detoxing and cleansing itself. It's why you have a liver and why you have kidneys. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing that you can do is rather than put yourself on three days or seven days of a liquid diet, is to really think about what you can do for the long term to keep, to clean up your diet, you know, throughout the year. And so... That's the, the first thing is, is to, to make sure that you're, you're looking at it's sort of from a, a holistic perspective where you're saying, you know, detoxing is something that my body can, can already do by itself. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I would say about cleansing and detoxing is you're only doing it for three or seven days. The second you stop, literally the second you stop doing whatever you're doing, your body's going to change to adapt to whatever the next thing it is that you're doing, right? So if you go from 
a full three days of drinking nothing but green smoothies and then now you're craving and literally, you know, you've got migraines and mm -hmm. you've got we're in a health show, so I'm going to just say it. Massive diarrhea. Right. You know, like there are some pretty, mm -hmm. you know, extreme, extreme consequences mm -hmm. that happen with these diets. The second that you stop, you're craving salt mm -hmm. and crunch. And the second you put that nacho dipped in salsa into your mouth, mm -hmm. you are now retoxifying mm -hmm. yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So the idea is you want to think about what are, what are some long-term plans that you can sort of the ultimate detox, right, throughout the year. And so I would, I would recommend considering ideas like how can you increase the amount of fruits and vegetables in your diet overall rather mm -hmm. than binging on green smoothies filled with kale and turmeric and all these things that are really wonderful and good for you, mm -hmm. but you don't need to over inundate yourself with them in order to cleanse your body. Okay. You want to be healthy for your entire life. So mm -hmm. making those changes and making sure that you're getting those fruits and vegetables in all the time, mm -hmm. that's what's important. Yeah. You know, I'm, I know we talked beforehand about some questions, but I'm going to just kind of go a little bit off Please. our yeah. pre-conversation. Um, Put me on the spot. Yeah. Well, something that you had said earlier when you were talking about if you generally don't eat healthy, when you start to make small changes to eat healthy, it seems like such a drastic mm -hmm. positive effect. Yeah. Can you talk a little about that? Yeah, I mean, so the thing is is that there are there are so many benefits to even making small changes, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're talking specifically about nutrition right now, but even, you know, if, when you're thinking about exercise and physical activity, things like going for a walk, breathing the outdoor air, increasing your fruits and vegetables even if it's just a little bit, mm -hmm. um, changing you know, uh, your, let's say, steak dinner to a fish dinner once a week, right? Just these small changes can really have dramatic benefits on your health through the long the long term. So it becomes Not, more like a lifestyle change exactly. rather than a diet or a cleanse. Exactly. And, and I think that's something that I, and I, I'm imagining um, your guests coming forward are, are going to talk about too, is that lifestyle is so much more important than the short-term fix and that's going to be significantly more beneficial to your health throughout your entire life. Okay. Now, uh, exercise-wise, I know you teach spinning. I do. Are there some different exercise techniques or theories, or I know you do some research in this area, that points that would be helpful to raise? Move. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just anything you can do to move. Anything yeah. you can do to move. I, so um, recent studies show that only 20% of Americans are actually getting enough physical activity if moving at all, which means that 80% of the population can benefit by doing anything. Okay. So, and, and the, the recommendation that I would give is find something that gets you going, that gets you excited, and that's going to bring you back to do more. If you're going to the gym and you hate it, mm -hmm. stop and go find something else to do because that torture is not going to help you in the long term. Find something that you can do that you can start small and grow big or maybe go for it and go big, mm -hmm. but something that you really, really love and are passionate about and that's gonna keep you coming back and, and, and doing more. Okay, I just wanna end with one quick thing. We were talking earlier about a recent interview that Tom Brady did on the radio mm -hmm. on Del Dennis and Callahan and he was talking about the nature of traditional medicine being kind of reactive versus uh, preventative. Based on some of the research you've done or some of your experiences, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's really true. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the medicine that we work with now is about treating problems rather than getting to the root cause of them. And, you know, just speaking of, of Tom Brady and Giselle, you know, there was another article that's coming out that looks at their diet. There was mm -hmm. um, an interview done by their chef that looks at, you know, and many of the headlines are saying, oh, this diet is so extreme. It's it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not that extreme. Mm -hmm. Their diet is 80% plants and 20% meat. If we all did that, we would be a significantly more healthy population, significantly more healthy individuals. So we need to figure out how to make 
closer to that be the norm where the majority of our food is coming from fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds, with a sprinkling in of dairy or meat or however you want to sort of spice up. The, and that, that becomes main... preventative in and of itself. Exactly. We and we take charge of it. Exactly. So we take charge of that. We own it. And then we're eating these foods that are going to be healthful or helpful to our health throughout our, our entire life. Okay. Great. Wow, lots of information yes. in a short span, short of time, span of time, but I appreciate it and I'm sure the viewers do too. Thanks so much for joining us. I was very happy to be here. Thank uh, you so much. All right, stay tuned. We're going to talk next about the healthy checkups you should be doing throughout the year. Because I want to be a good example for my son. Because I want my children to have healthy and loving relationships because we can show boys they have the power to prevent harm or abuse. Because you taught me that racist and sexist jokes are not okay. Because I want to teach my players respect. Because every boy needs to know that somebody cares about them. Because strong men don't hide their fears or emotions. Because I'm not afraid to admit that I was wrong or don't have the answer because no one should fear the person that is supposed to love them. Because supporting fairness, equality, and empathy is what men do. Men are an important piece of the puzzle to ending violence against women. Let's reimagine manhood. Hi, and welcome back to the show. Being that it's the beginning of the new year, there is no time like the present to take charge of your health. And so to that end, we're going to talk about some of the healthy checkups that you should be getting throughout the year and different ways that you can stay on top of your health by taking steps to meet with different practitioners. So to that end, here we have Elizabeth Larson. Elizabeth is a physician's assistant with Nosset Family Practice on the Cape in Orleans. She's been in family medicine for 16 years and has a special interest in training in holistic health. So mm -hmm. welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you could come on. This is something that's near and dear to my heart. I always try to kind of stay on top of everything, mm -hmm. but obviously everything shifts with age and there's yep. different guidelines for, for every person. So let's first, before we talk into the what you should be doing, mm -hmm. the who. What are the different kinds of practitioners? Well, most people are familiar with medical doctors, MDs, right? Um, but many other people can provide primary care. Mm -hmm. um, DOs, which are medical doctors who also have training in osteopathy. That's similar a to chiropractic. Doctor of osteopathy. Okay. Yep. Um, physician assistants okay. and nurse practitioners. Mm -hmm. And we all can perform the same and do perform the same duties in a primary care office. We all have our own set of patients. We order labs, we order x-rays, we prescribe medications, we do the physicals. So we're all capable of performing and do perform regular primary care. Okay, great. So now that um, we've talked a little about who's doing these services. Mm -hmm. What kinds of checkups are, I mean, I think most people say, oh, I get a physical every yep. year, but there's even subtext to that, right? Well, every, in our primary care practice, mm -hmm. we encourage all of our patients of all ages to come in and have their regular checkups. They start as an infant, because we do mm -hmm. see we're in family practice, so we see any, anywhere from a newborn all the way up to our patients over 100. Um, but each age group has their own set of guidelines. And those guidelines are, are uniform across the country so that the American Academy of Pediatrics has their guidelines that they set down. American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists mm -hmm. have their set down, et cetera, et cetera. So we tend to follow all of those guidelines. Recommend pediatrics start when they're an infant and they have those guidelines for immunizations, well child checks once a year, vision checks, um, moves into young adults, um, child women and, and men of childbearing years, mm -hmm. older adults, and then of course seniors. Mm -hmm. So each one of those has their own set of guidelines for not only for physical exam, but for immunizations as well. Okay. Um, most people are more familiar with things like cervical cancer screening, breast cancer screening, osteoporosis, colon cancer, prostate cancer, but we also at every visit, we try to screen for high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, osteoporosis, liver function, kidney function, the list goes on and on. So in the mm -hmm. half an hour that we're allotted for your physical, it's really not enough time. Okay. So we try to get all as much as we can in. Um, so that's the basic setup. And, and we do recommend that the more regularly, 
regularly, excuse me, that you come, mm -hmm. the more likely we are to get to screen for all of that. Okay. So having that relationship with your primary care, whoever that person is, is really fundamental to keeping you well. Okay. Now I know, and I occasionally see, this is not necessarily something we talked about beforehand, but on the same topic, I sometimes see on Facebook people will say, I'm looking for a primary care doctor, mm -hmm. does anybody know? Mm -hmm. And I know oftentimes young people don't have a doctor that they see for primary right. care. Right. And so that is an important important thing to have one point of contact rather than when you get you know god forbid hit by a car or something you need to see Absolutely. somebody emergently Absolutely I think it's so important it's so important to have that touch point that that mm -hmm. person that you know that knows you mm -hmm. and that you have that therapeutic relationship with no matter what it is whether it's a cold or a stomach ache or something that we, we're having a hard time figuring out. If that person really knows you and knows your history, it goes a long way to taking better care of you. Okay, now I know for myself, I just crossed the welcome to age 50 mm -hmm, mark, mm -hmm. and so I had to go get a colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. And I know oftentimes there are people that I talk to in my age group who don't get them. Right. And so there are probably other tests like that that are unpleasant, but it's important to get these, no? Yes, Testing absolutely, they're, they're set down for a reason. and. Um, Agencies like the uh, United States Task Force for Free, blah, 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 always a lot in my mouth, for preventative medicine, yeah. um, is one of the, the leading agencies that tries to set down guidelines. And what they're trying to do, I think, is screen appropriately, not over screen, not under screen. Mm -hmm. And so some of the guidelines, like kind of shifting and changing, like the new mammogram guidelines um, are now starting at the age of 44. 40, 44, 45 to 54 for yearly screenings. Prior to that, there's an option not to have screen, and after that, an option of every other year, of course, depending on your risk. But that's a change. Okay. So we're trying to, to screen women who are in that age group where it's the most risky and not over screen. Okay. Um, and we're going to include in our segment here the guidelines so mm -hmm, that people have something mm -hmm. to reference. Yep. Now, let's just talk before we wrap up about a little bit about holistic medicine, because I mm -hmm. know this is an area of expertise of yours. Talk a little bit about what that means, holistic medicine. Well, versus... for me, holistic medicine is about treating the whole person. Okay. I believe in my regular day-to-day -day primary care practice that you have to treat the person mind, body, and spirit. You can't just treat the what's going on mm -hmm. because what's going on has links to what's going on for them stress-wise in their family, their childhood stuff. Everything is connected. Mm -hmm. And the immune system is part, it, it starts in our brain, it goes all the way down to our body, the gut, the brain, everything is linked. And without really treating the whole person, I don't think you're treating them whole, right. truly and wholly. Right. Yeah. So what kinds of, of of appointments or specialties or practitioners fall into this category? This so, is like your massage therapist? Right, or? massage, acupuncture, chiropractic, okay. um, Reiki, mm -hmm. um, chiropractic, what did I say? Chiropractor, mm -hmm. massage, acupuncture. Um, all of those people can be part of your team to keep you healthy. And I think you need a team. I think we need a team of people to keep right. us healthy and well and connected. So it's more than thinking of those as just once a year I'll go get <clears throat> a massage. Absolutely, it really should because, be part of your, yes. if, you can, if you can swing it. I know recently I went to the massage school in the South mm -hmm. End and you can get massages from students in training for $30 and that was something that I did when I had a little pain in my neck and it was a cost effective way to fit that in. And human touch <clears throat> is critical yeah. to healing. Yeah. Human touch. I touch my patients. You have to touch your patient. Mm -hmm. So however you get that human touch, that human connection, mm -hmm. that's so important in staying well. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much thank for you coming. So much I know for you came up me. from the Cape, so I really, really appreciate it. I think this is so important for our viewers. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Stay tuned. We're going to talk next about healthy drinks and where to get them. You're doing great. Let's just, we're gonna try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button to see. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep, keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Hi, and welcome back. 
In our Serve It Up segment, I like to share different products and places and things that you can do around nutrition to stay healthy. And so today, we're going to meet Liam Madden. And Liam is the founder of Life Force Beverages. And he's going to be sharing with us information about one of their products called Jubilee. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I have tried your drinks and I love them. I was um, you know, talking to you before the show about some of the ones that I really love. And um, I think a good place to start would be for us to talk about what inspired you to start the company. Well, I believe I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Uh -huh. I grew up with a mom and dad who both took the entrepreneurial path. Oh, and nice. uh, I just combined that with my passion from the age of 12 and onwards of using food to feel the best I can possibly feel or mm -hmm. to optimize my uh, athletic performance or help heal any sort of conditions. Food was the first step for me um, before a doctor or before um, any book or coach or guru to have power of my own health. That's great. And so you started, when did you start the company? Three years ago, 2013. Okay, and where, you're a Boston-based company, yes? Yes, we okay. are, uh, I walked here from 10 oh. minutes ago from Bork, uh, Dorchester. Okay, great. And so tell us a little bit about what is involved here. Okay, so we make um, some very, very unique teas. Okay. We use herbs instead of your traditional black or green tea. And these herbs, we use a lot of them. Imagine how many tea bags it takes to get something this black. Sure. Um, it's not just one, it's imagine maybe like five to 10. Mm -hmm. And they're steeped for hours and hours and hours to really extract all the power out of these herbs. Mm -hmm. um, so we call them herbal infusions and okay. we're using herbs that have from a uh, traditional cultural standpoint been used for thousands of years up until today where they're used um, by, by herbalists to help people use uh, specific herbs to specific functions. So one might be great for your immune system, one could be good for your liver, um, or help nourish your, um, your hormone, your endocrine system. So different recipes are made with different things in mind um, okay. based on the power that the, those herbs have. Okay, great. And where do you make these? I mean, do you make these yourself? Uh, yeah, we're a company that produces our own product. Okay. We make them, like I said, 10 minutes away. In oh, Dorchester, that's actually where it's yes. produced. Okay. Um, and I should also say that we, other than these herbal beverages, we make um, some very rich, decadent smoothies with uh, cold pressed juices. Everything is raw and homemade almond milk. So you're getting a lot of fiber and fat and protein and all the, the whole food to balance out um, the sugar that most juices have. Okay, and I noticed when I was trying them myself that many of them say mini meal. What does that refer to? It refers to the fact that whereas a juice that most people buy in a store has just the liquid and the sugar, okay. um, also some of the nutrients come with that. But when your body is hit with so much sugar at once, it, it really spikes all of your, um, your insulin, the, the way your body processes food and it absorbs much more slowly, much more like a meal, like mm -hmm. a whole food, when you have the fat and the fiber and the protein to come along with sugar. Okay. So it's just, it's a lot more of a balanced approach. Okay, so I know we were gonna kind of pick a couple and I was gonna have an opportunity to try them, but especially in terms of sharing some of the flavors or some of the styles, mm. can you walk us through some of that? Sure, <laughs> um, well certainly our most popular is the berry and I think it's, um, just because people love berries, but also the color is really vibrant. Ah, yes. Um, this is called the Lala Berry, which is named after my fiance. Oh, who, nice. Who goes by Lala. Oh, um, nice. Let's pour it so people can kind of see yeah. what, the, what it looks like. So, so it's, it's pretty it's, thick. Yeah, right? it's kind of like a healthy milkshake. You okay. can see it's got some body to mm -hmm. it. Uh, it's raspberries, blueberries grown here in, in Maine. So oh, we try great. to source as close to New England as mm -hmm. possible. Um, mm -hmm. Elderberries, which are nature's flu shot. Um, very, okay. very immune supporting berry they aren't very popular because you need to actually um, break them down quite a bit before okay. you can't eat them raw okay let's try a different one sure um, what so, about one of these yeah go. okay this is uh, mocha um, mocha bliss it is cacao so that's the base ingredient in chocolate okay and almond wow. milk we make our homemade almond milk with just simply almonds and water so when you say milk, you don't mean dairy milk. It's non-dairy, correct. Milk. Okay, great. 
And that is um, mixed with some espresso beans, some sea salt, and some banana. Oh my God, that is really, really it's good. Divine. Yeah, that one I have had before, and that is delicious. It really does taste like a chocolate milkshake. Yeah, that's fabulous. And then let's last try out one of these ones that don't look as thick. And would you consider this more like a tea? Yeah, um, a tea is it, it's a tea is just a, a bag of water, and you okay. get flavor from that, and you get aroma from that, mm -hmm. but you don't get nutrition. Okay. So with these, you're actually oh, steeping it long enough to get some of the the nutritive power. Okay. Um, this one is dandelion, which is one of the most common plants in the world, using. Pretty much every culture that dandelions grow in use it as some sort of medicine. Wow, that is really good. And it's definitely a unique taste. So the herbs, why did you focus on this? Because of availability or because of their potency? Well, they're a really effective way to hydrate at the same time mm -hmm. as doing something good for your body without getting a ton of sugar. Okay. So um, I like that efficiency, and I love the fact that um, there's really an a gap in the marketplace. There's a lot to be learned um, in the mainstream about herbs as, as a part of your diet. Right, right. And it's certainly a portable way if you're on the go to get, you know, if you were traveling or you didn't have time to sit down and eat a meal, a great way to kind of do that. Yeah. So how do people, where do they find, you have a website I assume? And, and there... Yes. Uh, we sell on Jubilee, that's J-U-B-A-L-I yep. dot okay. org. Yep. Uh, you can learn about everywhere we sell. We sell in every store um, that's a health food store in the Boston area. We're in pretty much every um, state in New England and New York City. That is great. Well, congratulations. It sounds like a wonderful uh, company. Certainly probably a bunch of fun people to work with and everybody's focused on health and wellness, which is great. And it, it's delicious. I can certainly vouch for that. So thank, thank you, you so much for coming. I love sharing this information. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so stay tuned for the wrap up after this. Don't wait, communicate. Make your emergency plan today. That's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And remember, after the show, I post it on my YouTube channel, Bare Bones Yoga, so you can watch it. Please share comments, thoughts, and feedback using the hashtag livingwellbnn on Twitter. Thank you, and between now and our next show, live well.